So this can be used, so can, can be used to solve, well obviously to solve DEs, um, but what DEs? So just like the ones we've been, the ones we've been doing, so to solve non-homogeneous, non-homo, I guess I'll spell it, genius, what a big word, non-homogeneous linear DEs with constant coefficients. So linear DEs, DEs with constant coefficients. So it's worth writing down because you never know like when you're gonna look at your notes again. Maybe like, right, you might. You might next year, you know, you might be sitting at home and say, hey, I'm gonna look at my DE notes. So it's good that they're correct. So it can be used to solve non-homogeneous linear DEs with constant coefficients. I'll even spell it coefficients, coefficients. And there's more, right, there's more. Where, so where the, so where the, and now I'm gonna use an, an abbreviation. Hey, Giovanni, hey, RHS. Anyone know what RHS means? Right hand side. Right hand side, yep. Can be, so in the last section, the right hand side was like E's, sines, cosines, polynomials, stuff like that, like E to the X, no, 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 yeah, E to the X plus yep. cosine, yeah, I was like, wrong class, uh, X plus sine, etc. In this case, it can be, I'm just gonna put it in quotes, anything, anything is fair game, so anything. So you might be wondering, why didn't we do this and skip the previous section? It's because this has integration, and integration can be hard. <laughs> so, yeah, so because the integrals can be hard, this is generally difficult. Also, these could be impossible. In theory, if you get an integral that you can't do, then you can't solve the DE. So, on your exam, you'll have one of these, and it will say, use variation of parameters. And I'll say, simplify as much as possible. Um, just because it says simplify doesn't mean you can, so we'll talk about that later. Uh, yes, yeah, so you'll just have one, just one, okay, just one. The second remark is to be careful. So it says, it says it on my notes, so I'll write it. So be careful, so be careful. My problem is it says, these, this, this is a long method, then it's scratched out and it says be careful. So both of those things, just take your time. There's only seven homework problems for a reason. I think there was like nine total available, and I, and I assigned like seven of those nine. It's, it's a really small section. Uh, I think all nine are up there. No, I think it's, it's seven. Yeah, it's seven. <laughs> seven. There used to be eight one semester, uh, but the eighth one I took it out because it had a Y triple prime, and that involves ridiculousness. So let me give you the steps, like step one, step two, step three, step four, et cetera, and then we're gonna go through the steps. The steps might seem overwhelming because it's a lot of steps, but once you do one of these, you, you got it. So steps. I think the one on the test isn't insane. Uh, I know it's not the one that's on the old test. That's the hardest one. So steps, steps. Step one is to put the DE in standard form. So I'll show you what this means. So put in standard form. So let me just give you an example over here of, of what standard form means. On your exam, it will be in standard form, don't worry. I would really hate for you to forget this step and then mess up the whole problem. So as an example, say we had four y double prime plus y prime plus y equals uh, ln x. Say we had something like this. So this is not in standard form. So by standard form, they mean that this has to be a coefficient of one. So to make this a one, uh, we just have to divide everything by what in this case? Four. By four. So you would just divide by four. If you take pictures of my notes after class, which I totally think you should, especially for this section, um, you'll notice that I messed up on the very last question, and that's because I forgot to do this. So on number seven, there's a 36, just don't forget to divide by it, okay? If you don't, the whole thing will be wrong. I'll, you'll see why in a minute. So step one, make sure that's a one. Always, always make sure that's a one. Otherwise, the formulas won't work. All right, step two is really easy. Step two is super easy. Um, you basically pretend it's equal to zero and you solve, just like we were doing in 4.3 and in 4.4. So you solve the associated homogeneous equation. So the associated, I'll spell it this time, associated homogeneous equation. So solve the associated homogeneous equation. And we have to be a little more precise here. So to get, so I'm gonna write down what we get. So we get y sub c, that's what we were getting before in the previous sections. Um, but now we have to label stuff. So let's call it c1y1 plus c2y2 
plus C2Y2. Whenever you do a step on the test, feel free to box in your steps. Uh, it makes it very easy to grade, uh, partial credit, stuff like that. So you get, this is a question where partial credit is king. It's all about, I mean, it's better to get it completely right, but you can get a lot of partial credit on this question because it's so long, right? It's so long and there's so many steps. So, you know, when you get this, that's an accomplishment. Put it in a box. Let me know that you know that you know how to do it. I, I won't be like, oh, it's wrong. That's not the answer. I'll, I'll know. I'll know what you're doing. So that's the second step. So solve the associated homogeneous equation to get that. So in this case, you'd pretend it's equal to zero and you would try to factor it and go from there. It doesn't matter which one y1 is and which one y2 is, okay? It doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, if, like if, if Kyle has sine here and cosine here and Duncan has cosine here and sine here, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer at the end. So it's all, it's all good. Step three is to compute the w's. So three, compute, and there's three of these creatures. Almost everyone can do step three. It's really easy for the most part. Well, so the first one is the Ronskian of the y's. So you just take your y's and you put them here in the first row and you take the Ronskian of them. So y1, y2. And so when we're taking the Ronskian, um, you take the derivative, right? That would be y1 prime. So y1 prime, y2 prime. Someone mentioned PDEs before class. They were talking. Someone was talking about it, and you do use this in PDEs. I remember using this. Yes. For your YC, it doesn't have to be e to the y1. No, it's just y1, y2. Yeah. So, like, if let's just say, let's just say, uh, Ryan, that your answer was c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 3x, then your y1 would be e to the 2x. Yeah, and then your y2 would be good question e to the 3x. Mm -hmm. Yes. You'll have one of these, and you'll have an easy Ronsky and uh, two by two proof. Yeah, I didn't do an yeah, easy one mm -hmm. to help you relax and stuff like that, and you know, regain your composure and you know, all that stuff. You know, uh oh, I don't have an eraser. Oh, it's way over here. Okay. Yeah. So you have an easy one, uh, Anthony or Tony. I wanted to call you Anthony, but is it Anthony or is it Tony? Doesn't matter. No, it's going. It's going. Now we have to compute W1. W, I know a lot of Tonys actually, like in real life. Like, yeah. So W1, so W1, uh, basically for W1, you replace the first column with zero f of x. You may be like, oh my god, what's f of x? It's this, it's this thing here. Whatever is here is always your f of x. And then you keep the second column. So always replace the first column with zero and then whatever is here. So that, that's going to go here. So, like, so if you forgot to divide by 4, it would be wrong, you see? You would just have ln x. So it's really important to divide by 4. So this will always go here. So w1, 0 f of x. Here's the beautiful part. Here's why it's easy to memorize. When you compute w2, you keep the, you keep the first column, and you replace the second one. And what do you think is going to go here, if you had to guess? 0. Yeah, it's so good. Right? It's so nice. I love it. It's like Kramer's rule. It reminds me of Kramer's. So for W1, replace the first column with 0 and whatever is here. For W2, replace the second column with 0 and whatever is here. So it's really easy to memorize. The worst thing that could happen, perhaps, I'm trying to like worst case scenario, um, would be if you mess up this piece here, um, that would be really bad because then all of this is wrong. Okay. And the whole thing is wrong. So usually it's pretty easy here. Also keep in mind, like, when you're computing a Ronsky in one semester, they had this. They had x e to the x. So what, what rule do you use when you're Product rule. Yeah, you got to watch out, right? So this is a product rule, right? Derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. So just watch out for stuff like that. That might happen on the test. The one on your exam, it's not from the homework, but I don't think it's hard. I don't think it's like, I'm pretty sure the one on the old test is the, the, that you have up there is like the worst one. It's ridiculous. It's got crazy integrals. Hey! All right. Oh, you're already here. Good. So, it's, 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 so compute the w's. So, compute. so this doesn't require any integration so far. Step four. This is where it gets crazy. This is what separates the easy problems from the hard problems. You have to compute the u's. Okay, see, there's u's and w's, and there's all kinds of stuff in this problem. It's like ridiculous. Compute. So u1, u1 is the integral of w1 over w. Okay, u w1 over w. So be really careful here. 
Um, if you have a TI-89, which does integration, and it's a hard integral, and you put it in your calculator and you get the answer, that's fine, but you'll lose some points, right? Like, so, so if it's a hard integral, you gotta show work. If it's an easy one that most people can do in their head, you can skip the work. If you don't have a TI-89 and you get stuck here, what you can do is just call it something, like call it I, and then just keep going and give me a ridiculous answer, and you'll get a lot of partial credit. Just don't give up, okay? If you don't give up and you keep going, uh, I'll give you more points than if you just quit. So that if you get stuck, assuming you get stuck on the integration, because that's always like a fear, like, oh, what if I can't integrate it? You know, what if I get stuck and I only have 20 minutes? And then, yeah, well, it won't happen. So U, U, U2 is W2 over W dx. So these, these can be difficult. This is why we have the previous section because again, integration can be challenging, so we don't know what's gonna happen here. You could take Calc 2 and get an A and still get stuck on some of the problems in the homework, right? Because there's just, there are just so many integrals that you see. There's so, it happens. Step five. Step five is just a little bit tedious. Uh, we're gonna write down YP. So find YP. So YP is U1, Y1 plus U2, Y2. When you do this, you want to distribute everything out. So like if you have stuff in parentheses, it's a good habit to get into, just multiply it all out, take your time, and you'll have time on your exam. Just distribute it all through, clean it up. It's important because sometimes you'll be able to simplify at the very end. Step six, done. The solution is y equals, oh, I have a soda y equals, and it's yc, what do you think if you had to guess, plus what? YP. Plus yp, so it's the same as before. Very powerful technique. Again, you do use this in other math classes. Someone mentioned PDEs and I was thinking like, I remember, I remember taking PDEs years ago and like having to go back to my notes and say, oh, that stuff, and I had to review it in order to solve some of the questions. So you do use this in other classes. So, I mean, sure it's on your test, but if you're gonna take more math, you'll see it again, so. That makes it better, you know. If it's just like, if it's just for your test, it's like, it's easy to just like forget it and not care, but, so. That's it, that's it, we should just do a problem now. I don't know which one to do. Um, let, me, let me just try to pick one that requires some simplification so you can see what I mean uh, by that. This looks, this looks pretty good. Then yeah, maybe we should do this one, it'd be a good, uh, review. I think it's number, I can't read my notes, I think it's number four. Yeah, let's do number four from the homework. Let's try that. Number four. Number four. Start with that. Number four. So number four you could have actually done with the method of the previous section, although it's a little bit sneaky. So it's y double prime minus y equals cosinc x. Cosinc x. And I picked four just so I can refresh your memory on what cosinc is. So a quick aside. So aside, so I don't think we, have we talked about cosinch in this class at all? How is, has, okay, okay, good, good. So, so cosinch of x, so the way it's defined is it's the average of two functions. It's the average of, so if you take e to the x and you add e to the negative x and you divide them by two, you're taking the average of both functions. So cosinch of x is the average of these two exponential functions. That's what it says on Wikipedia. I think it's a really beautiful explanation. Cinch x is half the difference of these two functions. So it, you subtract them and then you divide by two. So you should know both of these for, for the test or, or just in general, although I'm pretty sure it's not on your test, but just in case, you know, it might come up on the third test. We do more of this. You see, you see it again. Uh, it's definitely on the third test. Um, what is this for? Hanging power lines. If you have like uh, two poles and you have the lines that are, that are hanging between the poles, the power lines, they can be modeled by this hyperbolic uh, cosine function. Uh, spider webs. If you go in your closet and you have spiders and you look at spider webs, they look like this, right? So. Spider web, these are little hyperbolic cosines. They're roughly hyperbolic cosines. If you graph it, I should just do it for fun because it's so cool, check this out. If you graph e to the x, it looks like this. If you graph e to the negative x, it looks like this. And then so to pick a y value on this graph, you add up the y values and divide by two. So like if I, this is my x value, I take this y value and I add it to this y value. This is e to the x plus e to the negative x. If you add those distances up, you're gonna be up here, 
right? This distance plus this distance is this distance divided by two and you're here. And you keep doing that, you keep averaging the points and you get this hanging power line, which is hyperbolic cosine. It's used in engineering mainly, yeah. Are we ever gonna have to define it as that to integrate it? Yes, yes, maybe in this problem. So that's why it's good to know. Good, Ryan, yes. Also in future sections. If you were to write it like this at the beginning of the problem and you could break it up, then you can use the technique of the previous method, right? But, of the previous section, but we're gonna do it using variation. So kind of cool, cool stuff, hyperbolic. Uh, by the way, the reason I think, the reason they're called hyperbolic, I'm not sure, but I think, it's because if you take these two graphs, just for fun, just you're supposed to learn stuff. If you do this, and you let t vary, and you remember what these are called? Para Parametric equations, these parametrize a hyperbola. So for a value of t, you get the actual hyperbola. If you use cosine and sine, you get a circle. If you use hyperbolic functions, you get a hyperbola. So maybe that's why they're called hyperbolic functions. I don't know. They are related to trig functions, by the way. There's identities, but you have to consider complex values of x. Like, there's, there's identities that relate hyperbolic to regular. Anyways. So, Yes, we're doing it today, right now. Oh yeah, we're gonna integrate it, we're gonna do what Ryan said, absolutely, yep. Oh yeah, so the derivative of cosinch is cinch, the derivative of cinch is cosinch, and when you integrate them, it's easy. Yeah, good. Oh. And you change the sign? No, you keep it. Really? It's a cinch, yes, yeah, I wanted to say that. <laughs> it's easy, right? People used to say that, I guess, like years ago. Oh, it's easy, it's, it's a cinch. No one says that anymore, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Huh? You're saying it now, so I guess it's still I am, yeah. Yeah, it's like those it's exp expressions that have died. So first you write down the characteristic or the auxiliary. Mm -hmm. So there's no negative sign when you derive mm -hmm. If you take the derivative of this, you just get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can take the derivative of the x, you get e to the x. Take the derivative of this, you get e to the negative x times negative one. Boom, the two hangs out, it's a constant. Yeah. Good, good question, yeah. Yeah, it's cool stuff. We could spend hours on it. In my Calc 3 class, I did a bunch of this stuff, like, well, some like this. One example of the hyperbola. This, this, um, you could factor it or add one. I, I don't know what's easier. Um, let's live dangerously. Let's add one. <laughs> so why is that dangerous? Oh, because when we take the square root, hmm, what are we supposed to put here? Plus or, plus or minus. Yeah, you could forget the plus or minus if you do it this way, right? It's like living on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, in college algebra, it's a common mistake. Like, oh, you know, they forget the plus or minus. Game over. Like, oh. <laughs> so we have, we have two different values. So we're going to have two, two e's, right, two e's. So we'll have y sub c equals c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x. So I'm going to put that in a box. That's like, you know, an accomplishment. We've made it this far. So, yeah, it just, and it, it helps you. Uh, there's a lot of steps in the problem, so by boxing stuff, you'll know what to do. It, it'll help you. It helps me. That's why I do it, too. So now we have to identify the y's, like in this formula here. So I guess I'll just call this one y1 and this one y2. So y sub 1 is e to the x. y sub 2 is e to the negative x. Take the derivative here, so you just get e to the x. So you get y1 prime equals e to the x. And then this one, when you take this derivative, what do you get out front? Negative. Yeah, negative, good. Very good. Take, we're gonna go slow, there we are there. Good. Good stuff, all right, now, now that's done. So that's, that's step two. So step two is done, we've identified the y's. And, oh, step two is this, rather. We're working on step three, so now we're gonna compute the w's. Mm -hmm. Why is that there's a negative for... For this one? Yeah, oh, good. Just it's a chain rule, so. This derivative is no, this. No, no, no. I, I got that. Oh, oh. It's um, like in the box part there. Here? The Here? Next one. Yeah, why is it e to the negative x? Oh, because, because these numbers here. Uh, so it's e to the 1x and e to the negative 1x. Because they're different, right? It's 1 and it's negative 1. So this is e to the 1x, e to the negative 1x. Do you see it? Yeah, now I got it. Yeah, so like if it was 2 and 3, oh, it's gone. But it would be e to the 2x, e to the 3x. Okay, good, good. Okay, so now um, we have to compute w. So w is the Ronskian of those bad boys. So this is going to be uh, e to the x, e to the negative x, and e to the x, negative e to the negative x. It's going to be w.
and then so when we compute the Ronsky, it's just a determinant. So we, we multiply this times this and subtract this times this. So, oh, oh wow. So what happens to these? What is that gonna become when you multiply? Ne negative one, negative one. Yeah, because what happens is when you multiply these, what do you do with the exponents? You add them up, yeah, good. Because it's x plus negative x, so it's e to the zero, which is one. So, and then you subtract, so you also get one because you add the exponents, x plus negative x. So when you, when you multiply these, you get e to the x plus negative x. That's e to the zero, which is one. Right. Or they cancel, you can think of it like, like this if you want. I don't think of it this way, but you can. You can, I prefer to add, because that's how we think about it when we're computing bigger Ronskians with like three, three functions. So this w, is simply going to be negative two, so negative two. I'm gonna put this in a box, right? You should always identify it clearly so that you don't get lost in your work. It really helps to like identify, underline it, box it, put it in something. Whatever you do, highlight, you know, anything you need to do so you can keep track of it. So now we have to compute w1 and w2. So basically for w1, we'll delete the first column and put zero in f of x. This is our f of x in this problem, the cosinh x, yep. So let's see, w1 is zero cosinch. And then we keep the second column, so e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x. Yeah. And you can compute it or you can write down w2. Let's just go ahead and, and compute it. So this times this is zero, and then minus this times this. So it'll be, ooh, it's equal to zero minus this, not today, oh no, no, not today. I'm not gonna mess up anymore, uh-uh. No, I know, I, yeah. So, so I'm gonna leave it like that, okay. You might say, oh, can you distribute? You can, but let's, let's just not, let's just wait. Because remember, before we integrate this, we have to divide it by W, so. I mean, that's just gonna be negative two, but you never know, like in this case, in this case you could distribute it and keep going, but as a general rule, it's better to wait until you get to the actual integral and then think about it. You know, try to like think about one thing at a time maybe. So like the W's, let's focus on that. W2, I think I can squeeze it in here, W2. So we keep the first column, e to the x, e to the x, keeping the first column, and then replace the second column with zero and f of x. So zero cosinh x, right. So then it would be this times this, minus this times this. So this times this, minus this times this. So it'd be, I think, it's just e to the x, cosinh x, uh, minus zero, minus zero. How do you, how do you say it when someone sneezes, gazoond? Gazoond tight. yeah, I heard you guys say that. I want to learn that, gazoond tight. it's fine. Oh, it's German? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. You probably say it a lot angrier than I say it. Yeah. Because you died! I was like, I can't. <laughs> any, any questions? Any questions on this one? All right, so we've got the W's. We've got the W's. No questions on the W's? No questions? So recap, just, just to you know, go over it again. So first you do this, right? And then you find this, you find your, your Y's, okay? And then you, you compute your W. For W1, you replace the first column. For W2, you replace the second column. It's this times this minus this times this. This is really minus zero. I just didn't write it, All right? It's minus zero. Okay, so now we gotta compute the U's. So the U's are way over here, the, these things. So U1 and, and U2. So u1 is w1 over w. So in this case, it's pretty easy, actually, compared to the other ones. So, so some of the other ones. So u1 is this over this. Um, so when you divide these, the negative signs are gonna go away. So, but I'll write it. w1 over w dx. So it's equal to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write every step. So w1 is negative e to the negative x cosage x over negative 2dx. Sometimes it's really beneficial to skip steps. Like if I was doing this and it wasn't a classroom, I would have just done this in my head and put a one half out here, right? Because the po negative and negative become positive. So you can skip steps and sometimes it's easier to do that. So I highly recommend it. Um, so we're here. 
This is like an evil test question for a Calc 2 class who has just learned integration by parts. Like, <laughs> like I want integration by parts, no! <laughs> so, this is really evil. So, because <clears throat> you know, if it's e to the x cosine x or something, you can use parts twice and it's the one that loops. But when you have a cosinch there, no, 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 I don't think that'll work. So, so now we're gonna use these definitions. All right, so I'm glad I wrote it down. So we're gonna use this one and then just distribute. Would no, I don't think so. Mm. Yeah. Are you missing a negative on your dot side of your one half? No, because the negative's canceled. Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. No, we're just going to distribute. I don't think tabular will work because none of them are eventually zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. yeah. So I'm going to rewrite it. So this is negative x. Why is it you can't use the trick like normal? Um, I don't know. I don't. I just don't think it'll work. I mean, I don't think it'll work. Uh, maybe it has to do with the fact that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then these are both the same. I've never tried it. I've never tried it. So, um, so oh, 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 falling apart here. So it's the average. So, so it's e to the x. I'm like thinking deeply about it now. So it's like, well, it work is Duncan right? Like it's so dx. It might, but I don't think it will. And my theory is Duncan because of the signs. Yeah. Cosine and sine, when you take the derivative, sometimes the signs flip. Here it doesn't, so I don't think it'll work out quite as nice. Um, let's go ahead and pull out this, this, this two here, right? So this will be one fourth. When you multiply these, you're just gonna get one in this case, right? Because these, these will cancel, so it'll be parentheses one, and then plus, and then these, you add the exponents. So it'll be e to the negative 2x dx. I really want, I'm going to break it up into two integrals now. So basically, this times this is 1, this times this, you, you add the x, the negative x's. Negative x plus negative x is negative 2x. So this is 1 fourth integral of dx plus 1 fourth integral of e to the negative 2x dx. You can go from here to here. I would have, if it was me and I was just doing this, I would skip all of this. How? Um, this times this is 1 and you get a 1 fourth, boom. This times this is 1 and you get a 1 fourth, boom. 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. This times this is e to the negative 2x. So you can skip some steps, right? This times this is 1, this times this is this, then I broke it up. Any questions on the math? We, got, we, we have time, we have time. When you integrate 1, you just get x. Or you just get x. When you integrate e to the negative 2x, yeah, this is de, so I think we've done it. You just divide by what number in this case? Negative 2. Yep. So it's going to be negative 1 eighth e to the negative 2x. Don't worry about the plus c. So I'm going to put this in a box. So basically, we divided by negative 2. That's how we got the negative 1 eighth, right? By, by dividing by by negative 2. This is a nice problem because it's not super crazy, the integral, although it is still a little bit tricky. And at the end, I picked it because there's like a simplification at the end, which doesn't always happen. This one does have that simplification. All right, now we got to do u2. So u2 is the integral of w2 over w dx. Notice how I write it every time. Even when I'm doing it on my own, I write it. I write the formulas the way I know what to look for on the board or on my paper. Yes? So is there no constant added on to it? No, there's no constant. Good question. If you do add a constant, when you do this, it'll just go away and it'll get absorbed. Good question, Robert. Right? Is it Robert? Really? Yeah. That's good. Okay. <laughs> really? For me? <laughs> no, I know, right? I know. Yeah, no, I'm done taking classes. No way. Uh -uh. Uh-uh, no. It's much fun to give, much more fun to give tests. Okay, so this is, whew, yeah, no. So it's this. I feel for you. No, it's, it's the divided by, by negative two. So it's this divided by negative two. Yeah, taking classes is hard. It's harder than working, I think. I guess it depends where you work, so. So, so this divided by this. And it depends what classes you're taking, too. So this divided by this. <laughs> So this, you can pull it out. So u2 is negative 1 half. Now it's negative. So e to the x, cosine x dx. Let me pause here.
Any questions so far on anything on this one? This is like 40 points on your test or something ridiculous. It's a lot of points. Yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of points. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I can look. I have it here. I have the, we'll have the announcement here. I forgot to put the test. Uh, I don't have it. I haven't picked it up. Oh, there's someone here. Hey, all right. You made it, Austin. Um, let me see. Uh, 177. Yeah. Yeah, that's not so bad. Uh, this, same thing, right? You break it up. So it's going to be e to the x, then times e to the x plus e to the negative 2x. So e to the x. So this is a big chunk of the test, right? Yeah. Silver fifth. Y yeah. Oh, you did the math? <laughs> yeah, right. Right, because if it was a 200 point test and it was 40 points, it'd be a fifth. So this is over a fifth of the test. Yeah, scary. Mm -hmm. so it's not that bad. It's good for you. This times this is negative one fourth. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do it the way I do it here. So this is e to the two x, and then dx minus one fourth. It's so difficult. It's confusing for me. So let's see. This times this is e to the two x, and then this times this is one fourth. This times this, they cancel, right? Because you're just going to get one, so it's just going to be dx. Does that look right? Does that look right? For some reason, that was for some reason I had a hard time with that. So, this times this is e to the two x. This times this, they cancel, and you get one. They can't. Let me recap it because Austin's here from the beginning, really quickly. So just why not? Just yeah, why not? It's good. It's good. So first step, you do this. You pretend it's zero, just like before, right? So you pretend it's zero. You do this, and you get your y. See, call this y one, call this y two. Boom. Take the derivatives. Compute the Ronskin of that thing. It's W. Then you have to compute W1 and W2. For W1, you replace the first column of this with zero and whatever is here, so zero cosinch. For W2, you replace the second column with zero and whatever is here, so replace the second column with zero cosinch. Compute the W's, boom, you're almost there. Now you just got to compute the U's, which we're doing now. We did U1, now we're doing U2. We'll do another one after this. Let's keep going. So U2, that's a band. Um, you divide by, yeah, people know who it is apparently. My other class mentioned it. I thought no one knew who U2 was, but apparently they're still popular. Divide by 2, so you get negative 1 8 e to the 2x minus 1 4th x. Yeah, U2 is an old band. Like, when I was a little kid, like, they were, like, famous and, like, I mean, they've been playing forever. Like, the guy must be, like, 100 years old or something. I don't know my age who's going out of their way to go to Rush concerts. Rush? Who's Rush? Oh, I should know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Only take integration of these. Why I think it goes away. Like basically, if you add it, when you do this part, Tony, it'll get it'll go away. It'll get absorbed into other stuff. Because like let's say let's say let's say Tony that u1 was x plus c just for fun, and let's say that y1 was c. Uh, y1 was um, I don't know uh, e to the x. When you multiply these, I guess. It just, it just gets attached to this, and this gets absorbed into other stuff sometimes. Everything, because you have to add YC to it, so it all just gets absorbed somewhere. So you don't, you don't generally don't have to worry about it because it just gets absorbed. I like to use that word, absorbed. Yeah. Um, any questions? We're almost done. We're almost done. So we're almost there. We, we've. This is the hardest part. Uh, again, in this problem, it wasn't as hard as the, if you look at the old exam that's on there, it's ridiculous. Uh, this one's much easier, although, although, this could trip people up. I mean, if we hadn't done this in class and like it wasn't in the homework and it showed up on a test, you might, you might not remember this stuff, right? The cosinch and cinch, it's, yeah, it doesn't come up a lot. I think they don't teach it in high school, I think. That's what I heard. This? Yeah. Calc 2. Did you, did you take Calc 2 here or in high school? We like never learned Last it. semester they didn't know. Oh yeah, you, you do it in college. You just don't do it in high school though. Yeah. Something like we took Calc 2 last semester. Oh, you didn't do it? We did not go over that. Oh, that's, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. They went over the same thing. Like they went over cosine to cosine, but they didn't define it as e to the x. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's also, there's also the other ones like Tanch. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, they're beautiful. <gasps> Some people spend more time on them, like, I spend like one day on this when I teach Calc 2, and like, Rickman will spend like three days on it, I think, I think. Uh, he spends a lot of, you worry, he spends a lot of time on this, right? He goes through all the proofs, he proves the inverse one. Yeah, it's good, it's good. All right, so let's do, let's do the YP. 
So YP, 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 YP. I love the hyperbolic stuff. We could talk about it for hours. It's so great. It's like life. Yeah, I love the hyperbolic stuff. It's 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 so cool. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're here. So we have to compute this. So I already erased what I needed, but that's okay because I have you, right? I trust you. So 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 I think I'll write it up here. I think y1 was, oh, there's t here. It's e to the x. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to trust. And then y2 is <laughs> right here. Right? I think I'm, how, many, how many extra credit points do you have? Like 20 or something ridiculous? Yeah, I don't yeah. Know for a new record. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. I made the test as many points as I possibly could. And it's still only 177. It's a really short test. But I mean, 20 points out of a 200 point test is still 5%. Yeah. Yeah, if you if, if for this problem. Yeah, if, if you don't mess up. All right, so you, so, see, so we'll see. No, so we have this. So we have this. So one fourth. <laughs> now I think the grades in this test are going to be really good. Well, no, I think I think I think the structure of the test is better too. It's not like oh my god, how do I solve this DE? Is it a Bernoulli? Like no, it's it's, it's you'll know how to do it. <laughs> and then U two is here. So negative one eighth e to the two x. So plus negative one eighth e to the two x uh, uh, minus one fourth x. And then y two. We're not done. Got to. So th there's something. Something important's going to happen. So y one and y two are here. Yeah. No, it's okay. I erased them. That's why that's written back down. So. So you write this down. So we're not done yet. There's still there's something really tricky coming at the end, believe it or not. Um, so now we're going to distribute. I messed up in my night class here. I messed up distributing. I, I said, be careful when distributing, and then I messed up. So, so this times this. <laughs> this. You add these. You add these, right? So this is. <laughs> you can make marker sounds with your mouth. That's really impressive. <laughs> she can put it on YouTube, like <laughs> marker Kyle. All right, so then <laughs> so this, we'll go viral. So you add these. <laughs> so cool. I had a student uh, who could make bird sounds. That was really fun, but I couldn't get him to do it on purpose. Like so, it's kind of. <laughs> No, I'm just trying to not mess up. So, so this times this, <laughs> this times this. So we're here. Okay, we're not done. We're almost done. So you say, oh, it's easy. Now you just got to do this. No, but there's more after this, right? Because the question will say simplify. Now it doesn't mean you have to simplify, or it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean you can. Like, so sometimes you can't. It'll say in bold, simplify if possible. And like sometimes some of the people start their test like, why can't I simplify? It's because you can't. So sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So let's finish. So now, finally, make it seem long and dramatic. <laughs> it's so long. I know. It's ridiculous. These problems take forever. And this is not even like the hardest one. <laughs> so this is like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a full page. Yeah. That's why even my night class only has one of these on their test. I'm not a monster. So. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. I erased YC. It was on the board, but I, I have it memorized. It's it's this. Right, that's your y sub c. So let's, let's fill that in. So c1, e to the x, plus c2, e to the negative x. And then we have um, yp, I zoned out. I was thinking about something else. Can't do that. I was thinking about your test. I was thinking about like, what to do next. But let me just focus on this, because I'll mess up. What do they say, focus on the present? Isn't that like a thing? Like, <laughs> Focus on the problem at hand. That looks ridiculous. We're not done. There's more. There's more. So I'll let you catch up. The next step is the tricky step. It's this last step. So if you leave it like this on the test, you probably lose like three or four points. You say, what? Yeah. Because there's a key step, which I think is really important to note. So I'll show you in a second. I had a student once. He wasn't in my class. It was this guy I used to work with. I used to volunteer at the Altamont Center, one of my office hours in the tutoring center. This guy's name was Roman, like like the Romans. That was his name, Roman. And he was stuck on a problem for half an hour because he didn't know this. So that's, that's, that's the story. So basically, you can, 
you can combine some C's. So I'm going to show the work up here and then, and then just show you how I do it. So look at this. C1 e to the x is the same thing as this. Okay, so what you could do here, if you take these two, is in theory, you could do this. C1 minus 1 eighth e to the x. You could do that. Right, you could do that, in theory. C1 could be any number. So you take this one and this one, in theory, and you could do this. So this, you can call it something else, because it's another constant. Let's just call it C3. So what you do is you just rename it. So C3 e to the x. So just take these two, because they're the same, because they're both e to the x terms, you could do this and call this piece C3. So it becomes this. You could, you're allowed to do that because it's a constant. You just rename it. Will the, the, will the homework take this? Maybe. I don't know. What you're doing right now. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it should. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then this one, I'll put a tilde on it. Oh, the tilde. So would that one be C what? What do you think? C? Four. <laughs> Wait for someone to say four. Yeah, it's an explosive, but yeah, cuatro is, is, is four in Spanish. I was gonna say Greek, but I think it's, yeah, just Spanish. Right? Roman, is it Roman, really? Oh, okay. It sounds like the way you said it, cuatro, like, oh. It's like ancient Roman symbol. Um, and then we have this and this. So, one fourth x. There's another way to write the answer. I probably should show you, because it's college, and it's good to learn stuff. This would be, an acceptable answer. There's another acceptable answer though which I'll show you in a second. So, that's it. So just rename. So because these are the same, just call it C4. Because these are the same, just call it, just call it C3. So you can't always do that, right? So just sometimes, just sometimes. So I purposely picked this example to do in class because it had this in it. I didn't want to like waste 45 minutes or whatever, how, yeah, so how long it's been doing a problem where this doesn't happen. Like, oh, what if, you know, so it's better to just do it. Any questions on this step? All right, check this out. This is really beautiful. Watch this. So let's say that you don't feel like doing this in this example. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's another way to do it. Yeah, right here. Check this out. This is awesome. So you could do stuff with this. So watch this. You could write this as c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x. And now we're going to do some magic. Not magic, but coolness. So I have to think. Um, so this one and this one. What can we do with this? If we have 1 fourth x e to the x minus 1 fourth x e to the negative x. Just some scratch work here. Looking at these, we can turn this, I think, into something. We can pull out a 1 half x and it becomes e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. So that's 1 half x. And which hyperbolic function is that? Cinch. So that'll be plus 1 half cinch x. That takes care of these. Ridiculous, right? So this, you could take these two, pull out a 1 half x, and you could do that. And then I'll write up here so you could see. Then you could take these, one, pull out a negative 1 fourth, and you get e to the negative x plus e to the x over 2. I'm writing it, and I'm not sure if it's right. So yeah, it is. Whew. That's an x. That's an ugly x. It's a dying x minus 1 fourth. You don't have to do it this way, right? You're not expected to do this. The homework, like if you look at the solutions manual for the book, you can Google it and find one maybe. Uh, I did a long time ago. And they do ridiculousness. Like on the ones with trig functions, they'll use like six trig identities and they'll skip steps. And as long as your answer is correct and it's simplified like a normal human being, so like this or like this, I'll mark it right. So, so if you get like cosines and sines, you don't have to like use trig identities and stuff. It's, it's whatever. Because you can go on forever with identities, right? You could spend forever. Kind of cool though, right? Kind of cool. Kind of a cool, cool way to write it. Anyone like this? Besides, yeah, good Kyle. Extra credit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a uh, identity that just squared out? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Super, uh, super cool. I was going to put cool, but I'll put useful because you might not think it's cool, but I think it is. Uh, it comes up in Calc 3. In my Calc 3 class, they have this cosinch squared x minus cinch squared x is equal to 1. It doesn't come up in this class. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. We'll see cosinch and cinch again for sure, but it'll mostly be like this. 
You'll need to know this for the third test. Mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be a lot of it in the homework. Good, Ryan. We had never seen cosines and sins. Just curious. Okay, a few people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, just for him though, right? So, uh, so uh, Michael, I don't have a, yeah, yeah, I don't have a pen. Yeah, just throw it, just throw it, just throw it. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to be stupid, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's too much fun, I'm sorry. This is just ridiculous. Uh, uh, all, all right, fine, all, all, all gets two, yeah. Thanks. It's really sharp. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, okay, we have we have uh, 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 25 minutes. We can do we can do another one and go faster. Or do you want to talk about the test? It's up to you. Test. Really? You sure? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off then. Turn it off. Turn it off.